Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so this is another video on the Class A, uh, the 20 watt Class A. Well, it's rated at 20 watts. We've already seen in other videos that can't quite get 8 watts out of it into 8 ohms. So this could be the last video on this. I thought maybe my my other video was the last video, but it seemed like there's a lot of comments, a lot of people are still interested in trying to troubleshoot this. Now, in my last video, I, I think I tried to explain uh, why it was happening. And in this video, I'm going to show you, okay? I'm going to show you on the... I'm, I, I built a schematic. I'm going to show you that. And then I'm going to show you on the scope what's going on. And what I want to know is, are you guys really interested in trying to fix this? Do you think there's actually hope for this? Now, um, if you haven't seen the other two videos, I encourage you to go back and watch those two videos. Uh, it'll make a lot more sense. So this amplifier, when I first uh, got it in the mail, I got two right channels. And it's kind of a bummer. It's, it, the photograph showed the left and right channel. I contacted the vendor right away and they said, oh, just return them. And I kind of wanted them to send me a left channel and I'd send them back one of the right channels. Maybe they don't have left channels. <laughs> they didn't offer and they didn't, they just kind of ignored my my thought. And so I had the chance to return these guys, but then I thought, well, maybe I'll keep them. I mean, but you know, then after powering it up and seeing that it only does less than eight watts. Now in the earlier video, I did the Boldy Plot and the THD and that both looked great, but uh, the eight watts, thing is a problem and that's in the eight ohms by the way just again mention that now uh so this is also one of the most expensive amplifiers i've bought it is almost 100 bucks it's over 90 bucks i think it's like 97 dollars us i see it on sale even today closer to 75 dollars uh i think when i bought it you know cost and you know demand kind of thing i think it was before the holidays it took a while to get it and that was kind of disappointing because I'm trying to build an amplifier for a friend and that's why I was kind of in a rush and I didn't want to take the time to mess with this anymore but if you guys if I get enough thumbs up let's say if I get a hundred thumbs up I'll keep this and and see what I can do with it so let's see what you guys think about that um, now don't give a thumbs down if you if you don't want me to do it because that says you don't like the video it kind of hurts the channel but if you don't like the video go ahead and do that but uh but if you're just voting on whether to keep this or not yeah it's not thumbs up thumbs down kind of thing that's facebook works that way but youtube uh they say it is over and i to share that video we don't people don't like it so but it is a way for me to tell how how many of you guys might want me to see you know see, see me fix this okay and uh, or, or leave a bunch of comments. I'll, I'll decide. Okay, I, I can't right now. I'm on the fence. I do need to get this amplifier built that I'm working on, and I was hoping it was going to be a Class A. Now I'm kind of leaning towards Class D because the Class D was looking great. Anyway, back to this guy. Uh, you know, again, when I saw it, I bought it. I don't know what the schematic is. I don't know really any specs other than it's supposed to be 20 watts. And also in the description, it said uh, no feedback. I'm going to talk about that when I show you the schematic. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, this could be a cool amplifier. I haven't seen any on the YouTube channels or anything like that. It's got this big metal uh, heat sink to mount everything to to make sure everything's mounted properly. And the bias transistor, which, by the way, let me mention that. That does work. When I leave this on the bench for not too many minutes, it starts getting pretty hot. I'll put one of these 200 watt resistors on top of the heat sink just to help cool it off. And that, that helps. <laughs> I could put a fan on it, but that just makes it noisy and stuff. But anyway, it does get hot. But that transistor that's on the heat sink, that little guy, he's part of the bias network. And he tracks the temperature. And I can see, I'll set the bias current to one amp and i can see him uh pull back the bias current and drop the current down so he's doing what he's supposed to do so uh, there's many parts of this circuit that seem to work well and i'm going to show you today you're going to see that for yourself 
what I saw in the picture was big old TL3 cans on semiconductor transistors uh, mounted properly with the tracking bias transistor on the heatsink with them and big old 5 watt resistors I could see the bias network here with the uh, with the trim pot LED which I think the LED must be a fault mode because I haven't seen it turn on yet uh, has an air core coil for the output that's pretty cool you can't saturate those and it had a lot of capacitors I don't know the brand name but you know uh, they seem to be doing a good job and it's got a bunch of them but from the photographs I could see poly caps uh, I saw this op amp on the front end uh, years ago I designed an amplifier with an op amp it was actually a preamp and I used JFET op amps uh, for the high impedance and so I kind of I kind of like that I thought well they're using this op amp for the high impedance input to buffer the input signal and to, but they're actually using this guy for a lot more and I think that's the problem with the amplifier so and if these guys are fake then that's even more money I got to spill into this thing but here let's get into the schematic and let's talk about this and then I'm going to show you what's going on okay I'm going to try to be quick about this <laughs> okay here's my board and the schematic <laughs> sorry about that I had to change the battery um, yeah this YouTube video stuff's kind of fun but it does keep me on my toes there's a lot to do in making a video uh, it's a lot of effort actually so I want to apologize for my bench being messy because I've got a lot of experience going on and I just didn't have time to clean the bench off just you know for this test so uh, yeah that's why it's so messy pretty busy bench right now a lot of projects going on uh, all right guys back to this pretty busy board ignore all this for now I just put it all on so I could just uh, not have to you know show you different boards this circuit right here is the circuit that I kind of alluded to or just tried to describe in my last video uh, there's a Zener uh, diode with some transistors little small TO92s I think they call them little transistors next to them and they set up these regulation circuits to regulate the voltage for the input circuitry and I actually kind of like regulated power I'm a power supply guy so I like regulated power supplies. Plus, I think it cleans it up. Takes the even though uh, the amplifier has good power supply rejection ratio, meaning the you know the fluctuations on the power supply isn't going to get into the signal too much. Maybe a little bit, but nothing you could probably ever hear. But you know, changing biases and things. I don't know. I just like the idea of regulating and if it's a simple regulator like this low power for input section great now you don't regulate the output section on an amplifier especially a class a but you know because you're going to have a voltage drop for, uh, across your regulator and if you're putting a lot of current through it that current plus a voltage drop that's a lot of power so normally on audio amplifiers you don't well at least when you're doing it with linear power supplies you don't regulate the outputs uh, some do but it's common that they don't all right so back to this what you do is you have the voltage drill say this we're I'm just showing you the positive voltage drill there's one like this on the negative voltage drill too so yeah on the plus voltage drill you have resistor feeding the zener and let's say it's 14.7 volt zener I'm not sure what it is but I'm guessing that's probably about what it is that puts the voltage on the base of this transistor well the emitter can only be a diode drop below that so if you set up 14.7 here you're going to get 14 volts here pretty close and we saw in the last video as I increased the voltage the voltage on that Zener just changed about a tenth of a volt sets uh, or maybe it was 100 millivolts is what changed that, that's not too bad I mean that's pretty good regulation that's better than a whole bunch of bulk capacitors that are still going to move around uh, now this guy does have a big old 470 microfarad cap right next to this I, I wrote down 100 mic actually the 100 mic is located closer to the op amp okay the op amp is an 8 pin chip with two op amp devices inside it has both of these guys inside it now the 470 microfarad cap over here is rated at 25 volts that's going to be important in a moment when i talk about that 
So, well, let's talk about it right now, actually. God damn. My wife had knee surgery, so I'm kind of a nursemaid. I've been pretty busy uh, taking care of the dogs, taking care of everything, and yeah. Uh, trying to get a video in. <laughs> I, okay, so let's just talk about this. The uh, This guy regulates 14 volts, puts it right here. Then you have a minus version of this that puts a minus 14 volts here. All right? All right, so these guys right here, they supply the voltage to this op amp. Okay, so this uh, op amp, it drives the output transistors that are on that heat sink. Well, it actually drives... Uh, the two smaller transistors that are on the smaller heat sinks, the ones that are standing up next to it, uh, those are the drive transistors that drive the big transistors on the on the uh, heat sink. Okay, so it turns out from and what I suspected from the last video, uh, after seeing what was going on, as I was bringing up the input voltage, I didn't see the output was clipping, and I'm going to show that again. The output was clipping, and as I brought up the voltage, it kind of clamped around, I think it was around 11 volt, something like that. And uh, when I brought the, the power rails up higher, the clamping didn't keep growing. Normally when you get clipping, it's because your output transistors are hitting this voltage rail. In this case, uh, it's happening over here. And I could tell that because of this regulation circuit that's controlling this which also told me that when it drives that output stage, there's no gain in the output stage. It's just basically a, a voltage follower. It's just, it, it's like slapping a couple, inside the op amp, there's a couple small transistors driving the signal up and down. It's like putting those guys in parallel to that. So you got these drive transistors driving those other smaller drive transistors on those little heat sinks, driving the big output transistors. So, from this drive stage on out, there's no gain, okay? And the description of the amplifier says there's no feedback. Well, we know there's feedback because we can see some here. Let's talk about that. This op amp, the gain of an op amp, this is non-inverting. The input signal comes in here through 2.2K and hits this plus pin. So that tells me it's non-inverting. And so the gain of a non-inverting is the feedback over the input resistance. So 22 over 2.2 is gain 10 and then plus one, so it's gain of 11. That's pretty typical for an input circuit, I think. Now, there's also this 2.2K and 100 picofarad, which sets up a high frequency filter, and that's so you don't get high frequency perturbations or things causing problems here. And when that first video, we saw that wide bandwidth of this amplifier, so that's doing a great job. The 47K is just a load over here, and the voltage divider, 2.2K, most of that signal has come through, very little of it, is being lost in this voltage divider. All right, so so whatever signal you come in, there's no capacitive coupling, and I'm going to show you how this circuit takes care of the DC offset. Uh, I knew it did because by accident when I was testing earlier, I had a square wave set up for one of those other experiments I was doing, and I had some offset on it, and when I was having trouble getting the power out, I thought, well, I'm going to look at the square wave and see how clean it is to see how many other problems there might be. And the output from the square wave actually looked pretty good. Then I noticed the input had a DC offset and I was like, oh, geez. Um, but the output didn't and I was like, wow. Okay, so this circuit, the fact it doesn't have a, a pot to trim the output balance, it's like I, I thought, well, the circuit's doing it itself. And it turns out after tracing these op amps at the input, I can see how it's doing it. So let's talk about this guy. This guy has the output signal going through 470k into the plus terminal of this op amp. So again, not inverting. So again, the gain is feedback over input plus one. Now look at this. Instead of a resistor, we have a capacitor. Well, when you look at a circuit and you do DC analysis, uh, capacitors are like open circuits. So a very low frequency is close to DC, right? And so at very low frequencies, this guy's going to be very large impedance. At higher frequencies, low impedance. This is an integrator. And so as signals come along, he charge, you know, he's, he integrates that signal and basically averages the signal coming into it. So 
several things going on here. This guy's integration. This guy's an integrator. Plus, the gain of it is going to be huge because at DC, low frequencies. Also, look at this. There's nothing but a low frequency that's going to get through it because 470K with a 0.47 microfarad cap in comparison to this scenario over here, this is low frequency. This is a huge time constant. So in this case, where a small resistor here, big resistor, most of the signal comes here and is dropped across the bigger resistor. In this case, most of the signal is dropped across here. So you're just getting a little bit of signal through, just enough, and then there's this huge time constant. And then what we do is uh, we have this guy to even create big gain at low frequencies. So this guy's all about low frequencies. At low frequency, let's say there's a DC offset. This guy comes in plus, he, he drives the output plus, but let's say there's a DC offset. If there's a very low frequency or something like DC that has time to build up a charge here, this guy is going to react and put a positive signal out here into the negative pin here, which that is negative feedback and that is driving this this pin here wants to drive this guy negative this guy's trying to drive positive so this guy from the signal coming in here that that dc plus signal is is uh, subtracting away this plus one so they become balanced so the dc is offset it's nullified and that's how this guy's working i'm going to show you uh an action how that actually works okay so there you go. There's the circuit. I thought when I saw that op amp and I eight pin op amp and I knew there's two guys inside. I thought one might be a buffer to set up, you know, the frequency and maybe have a little bit of gain, and then the second one would have, you know, more gain. Uh, but now in a normal amplifier, if you think about it, when you see that those totem poles of transistors where you have the plus signal coming in to one transistor and you have feedback coming back to the other transistor and there's a current source and all that kind of stuff. On those kind of inputs, they're, they're able to pull the signal up close to the rail and down close to the other rail. This guy is pulling it to these two rails. So that's the problem. That's why we're not getting the voltage swing that we need out on this. And it looks like they did it on purpose. I thought they may have just selected the wrong Zener diode because maybe they just needed parts and and they could get these and it was close enough value. But the fact is uh, 470 mic cap, the one that's actually placed over here, it's only 25 volt rated. And this guy is only plus minus 20 volt rated. It tells me, well, you can't ever get even 20 volts uh, peak on the output. So, you know, we'd probably be lucky to get 12 watts out of this if we max out the value of this Zener and try to get close to 20 volts over here. Another thing is to change this guy out with, let's say, uh, one of those OP op amps. Uh, I know that there's they have some low noise ones, uh, plus minus 35 volt rails. So that would be ideal for this voltage range. And so we could swap this guy out for one of those, and they are pin for pin compatible. They try to, those eight pin devices, they pretty much match the pins on a, on a two op amp uh, device. So that's possible. Don't know how good the sound quality would be with that kind of op amp, but we could always try that. And then uh, I'd have to swap out those capacitors for say 35 or 50 volt rated caps. It'd be better to have 50 volt. now. Ironically, the 100 microfarad cap that I showed here is actually placed over close to the op amp. Those are 50 volt caps. 100 mics are 50 volt. And uh, so I have to change out the Zener diode, some capacitors, and this guy, and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go look at some signals. Okay, so what we're looking at, here's the GW's Instec scope. It's the MDO 2204EG. And right here in channel one, it's the yellow one. It's gonna be 500 millivolts per division. Channel two, and that's the input signal coming in to the amp. This is the output signal of the amp, channel two, and it's five volts per division. And channel three is also five volts per division, and that will be the output of the op amp that we were talking about, okay? 
and then I got some measurements selected here and then also the frequency should pop up and we're at 10 milliseconds per division okay okay guys I'm gonna turn on the music well at least we'll watch it we won't hear it this is Brantley Gilbert Hell on Wheels I think it's okay with YouTube if we watch it uh, I don't get a YouTube strike watching it right okay so the input's going on. I'm going to start turning on the amplifier and bring up the voltage. Okay, it's about 6 volts, 7, 8, 9 volts. And you see it hard clipping. I'll spread it out a little bit so you can really obvious. Okay, we're at 15 volts. And you'll see that this maxes out. The clipping, we don't keep on growing like we just did. See if I go back down, see how it goes down, then it comes up, and then it stops. And it stops right about there. We're at 15.7, 16 volts. I'm going to go all the way up to 31.6 volts. And this doesn't increase anymore. So that regulator, once it's in full regulation, it doesn't allow the signal to go up any higher than what it is. So there you go. There's uh, what we're talking about. Okay, now this is the input and the output. Now let's look at the op amp. I got to stick a scope probe on it. And I'll do that right now. Okay, there we go. So now that's going. I'm going to freeze it and then turn off the amp so it can cool down. Okay, froze that. And also, it won't be quite as noisy with the fans blowing. All right, there we go. So, okay, so now what we're looking at is the yellow signals are input, about 374 millivolts RMS. The output is the blue one. It's 8.46 volts RMS. And it it's a little bit lower than the purple one here, which is the op amp. And that's 8.78 volts RMS. So the op amp's just a little bit higher voltage. There's a little bit of voltage drop from the from the op amp output to the driver stage, which makes sense. But also there's a little bit something going on interesting. Uh, the output, you notice that the clipping is just above the line here and just down below, a little bit further below the line here. So it's kind of skewed uh, on the negative you know, region a little bit more. And the, uh, the output of the op amp, the purple one, is kind of skewed just the opposite direction. So I think what's happening is the output we don't have a pot to set the balance. So I think the balance is trying to push in the uh, negative direction and the op amps outputs going in the positive direction, trying to force it to correct itself. And so, yeah, so it probably would be good to have a, a potentiometer on the output stage to balance the top and bottom transistors to center it more because it looks like the amplifier you know the feedback loops trying to do that and it's still not quite centered all right guys now what we're doing is we're looking at a square wave uh just so i can show you what it looks like now the input's the yellow again the output's the blue and the purple one's the output of the op amp here let me just touch the op output of the op amp all right now you notice the op amp it's again It's, it's skewed towards a positive, and the blue one is like looks like it's perfectly AC coupled. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, DC offset. You'll see the blue one increasing in the positive direction with DC offset. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it. I'm sorry, I think I said and the blue one was going, but the purple one's out for the op amp. So as I increase the input signal, the yellow one, you see how it, all the DC offset it has? I mean, the center line, it's almost all in the positive direction, right? But the output of both the op amp and the amplifier are still AC coupled. So that's what that feedback is doing. It's forcing the AC coupling, taking away the DC offset. So that's a pretty cool uh, circuit. All right, guys, so what do you think of that? Uh, interesting, right? I think you understand where the problem is, right? It's 
that input circuit. Uh, here's those two transistors on the heat sink that are driving the transistors down here. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think. I'd uh, like to get your feedback. Uh, give a thumbs up to the video, please. Um, and, you know, if I get enough interest, maybe I'll keep this. Otherwise, I don't know. I might return it. I can't decide right now. I'm just kind of on the fence. But I do need to get back to that amplifier build. And I, and I think this is going to take a little while to, to get right. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. Appreciate you watching. Thanks to the Patreons for supporting me and all that. And for all you guys for supporting the video and commenting and all that good stuff. So, all right. Well, I still say it's a fail. It just, yeah. No dynamic range with this bad boy the way it is right now. I'm still kind of worried. I don't know how to tell if these are real or not. Uh, if I could buy a, a real one so I could compare it, maybe I should do that. I'd probably buy one on Mauser or Digikey or somebody like that, a, a vendor that I can trust probably, and uh, and then compare it side by side. But, all right guys, yeah, it's just, uh, it's too bad. I mean, if it wasn't an expensive amp, I'd just keep it around for a little while, but I've got boxes of amps to show you guys and power supplies to test and a bunch of stuff, but it could be fun. I, I don't know the lineage of this. It doesn't look like anything else I've seen on the internet. Uh, it and I it kind of intrigued me because I thought well this could be a cool lamp that I could you know demonstrate and and it still could be I don't know anyway let me know what you guys think and thanks a lot and we'll see you next time